Hey, doing a little video here on how to install a 3 or 4K governor spring kit on a 12 valve Cummins. Not going to go into a ton of detail, but I'll show you guys the basics, what you need to know. Um, I decided to just get a kit instead of, you know, shimming the stock springs because these are cheap enough. I'll put a link in the description if you guys want to purchase one. Uh, you know, if I'm doing, I'm going to do the 3K uh, kit and basically to do that, um, you just don't install these, these small ones on the inside. You don't use all three. And uh, basically what that's going to do is increase my defueling point from about 2200 to 2800 RPM. Uh, it's going to increase it up to about 2800 to 3400 RPM. Now, you can put the 4Ks in. A lot of guys like to do that. You know, this isn't a race truck, so I don't feel like I need that. And what you would want to do if you do that is uh, replace your valve springs to the 60 pound springs otherwise you know you risk catastrophe so to get started get the five bolts off of your intake here and the uh one holding this on for the, the dipstick tube get your dipstick out too there you got 10 millimeter heads on them get that out of the way and you then you're going to want you know salvage your uh gasket make sure that's in good shape cover that up with some tape cover this hole up here good enough and come in here and uh, before you go taking anything off make sure to clean this out real good with get any all the loose debris out of there and stuff like that because you don't want any of that stuff getting inside of the pump when you go to take things off in the clamp here for your intake is an 11 millimeter or 7 16 nut next you're going to want to remove your shutoff valve here this electronic solenoid and uh, looks like three eight millimeter bolts one two and one on the back side back there get that thing out of the way so those three bolts and then on the bottom you have a pin with a cotter pin going through it remove that get that out of your way then coming down in here looks like i got some safety wire across my my plug there i don't know if you guys can see that so i'm going to cut that safety wire out of the way then that's a 7 8 plug you're going to remove down there uh, or 22 millimeter Make sure to clean, again, around the surface very well before you go taking it out. And you're going to have to remove this, this linkage, uh, you know, might be in your way too, so get that out of your way. You pop that plug out, and then from what I understand, you're going to rotate the engine with a 15mm uh, socket on the crankshaft until the springs are exposed. Uh, obviously, you're going to want to make sure that the fuel is uh, not flowing when you do that, because you don't want this thing starting up. And uh, by the way, make sure your truck's in neutral as well. Uh, disconnect the battery is a good idea too. All right, to get the plug out, I had to get this out of my way, this uh, fuel shutoff lever. It's keyed so you don't have to worry about putting it back on the right way. Um, well, the right direction, but yeah, it's keyed. So eight millimeter on that. And then you get that plug out of the way. Make sure to put a pan under the truck because it does leak some oil out. Now I can see one of my springs, but you're going to want to rotate the engine until it's properly uh, located, and then you're going to want to take a vernier caliper. All right, after rotating the engine and positioning the spring properly, you're going to want to measure the distance between that center stud you see and the slotted retaining uh, fastener there. That should be somewhere between 40 and 50 thousandths of an inch. You're going to use something like a vernier caliper like this to measure that before removing it. And uh, when you put these back down, that has to be set at the same spec. All right, so after you've measured the position of this nut or marking it with a marker, mine was 50 thousandths, you're going to remove this with a flat blade screwdriver. Then, very carefully, you're going to remove the components here. So this is your cap. And then these three stock springs, you're gonna discard these. And then you have a couple shims on the bottom of these. Make sure you're gonna use a magnet like this. Make sure that these shims don't get stuck to the bottoms of the spring and fall inside the pump, because that can happen. And then you're gonna discard the stock seats too. Uh, okay, so now if you're doing the 3000 RPM kit, then you're gonna just you know get rid of this uh, little guy. You're not gonna be using that. You're gonna install this new spring seat and just these two. And then you're gonna you know be using the same cap or top retainer, whatever. You're gonna put that back down in there, screw this nut down to where it was in the uh, same position before, 50 thousandths in my case. Uh, you can see it has like a wave lock style to it that's that's kind of how it locks in place as uh, you know 
So surprising to me that these it's that simple and they don't ever loosen up or fall out. But uh, yeah, just make sure. Oh, I'm sorry. There is a fourth spring as well that goes on the outside of this one. You're supposed to leave that inside the pump. You don't want to touch that because there is another shim on the bottom of that. And you don't want to mess with that. Keep that right where it is. So just like I said, when you're taking those out, though, um, that's what the hole looks like there. There's the, the stock spring in there. Uh, make sure you don't lose any of those shims if they're in there because you don't want them going in the bottom of the pump. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and uh, put this back together now. But basically, like I said, you're going to install these two springs. That, just like that. Tighten it back down. You know, secure this where it needs to be. Then you're going to rotate the engine until the other spring set is um, exposed. And you're going to do the same same thing with this other set. And, yeah, otherwise I think it's it's pretty basic putting this, this thing back together. So I'll let you guys know how it is. Um, just make sure to keep it clean and tidy and take your time. And, yeah. All right, so with the 3K springs installed, I gotta say I'm pleasantly surprised with the uh, increased drivability, RPM range, revs up to 3,400 RPM just as described. So, you know what? These guys throwing 4K springs in there and doing the valve springs, unless you got a race truck and you're dragging this thing, forget about it. You put the 3K springs in there, you get much better drivability. You don't have to mess with the valve springs. And uh, to be honest with you, you ain't gonna be bringing this thing up above 3,200, 3,400 RPM anyway. I mean, then this is a big engine. It don't need to be up there, but I gotta say, I'm pleasantly surprised with, with definitely the increased drivability. So till next time guys, KZ Guy 2, no nonsense, no how. Give me a thumbs up if you liked it. And I appreciate the comments. Thanks, guys. Have a good day.